today is I'm reading from Patriots and Prophets, chapter 25. It says, every week during their long sojourn in the wilderness, the Israelites witnessed a threefold miracle. They witnessed a threefold miracle. And this miracle was designed to impress their minds with the sacredness of the Sabbath. There was, help me, one, a double quantity of manna fell on the sixth day. Are you with me? Yes. A double quantity of manna fell on the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, how much manna fell? Nothing. 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 Right? Why was this a miracle? Because on all of the other days, there was manna enough for how many? For Only for one day. Each day. All right. Each day there was enough manna for the same day, and 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 if and if someone was greedy, what happened? So they were greedy, and they collected more than they needed, and they couldn't consume all of it. What happened? Yes. Was bad. I was looking for a particular word. What happened to the man? It's done. Yes. Right? Okay. But this was the miracle of, 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 of the Sabbath. On, on, on all of the other days, they were to collect just what they needed. Okay. What does, what does that say to us? What does it say to you? Every day you collect just what you need, Sister Emily. Okay? It means in the house of God, that is sufficient. Say that again. That is sufficient. That is sufficient, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? What else? In the house of God, you will never lack. You will never lack. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. In the house of God, there's peace. There's peace and there's no selfishness. There's no greediness. Okay? Why would you collect more than that which you need and then don't eat it and it's just there? And, and, and here when they didn't eat the manna, it did what? It lost them. And actually, when that happened, you see, there were some who, you know, they were told, collect just enough. And they go out and they gather, uh, you know, it was, it was just there, so they gathered. And it did what? It's tank. And God got what? Second part of the miracle was that the portion that was needed for Sabbath, you know, whereas all of the other days, when they had more than they needed, it got bad, it tank. But on the Sabbath day, it was preserved, sweet. <coughs> and if any were kept over at any other time, it became unfit for use. So every week, throughout the 40 years that they were in the wilderness, they experienced this miracle. Now, if we go to Numbers, uh, um, Exodus chapter 16, to start with, we saw... Um, from, number, uh, from, you know, from Exodus 14, how the children of Israel uh, come out of Egypt. Um, God performs a miracle. Pharaoh, who wasn't going to release them, suddenly says, go. And then they travel, they get to the Red Sea, and they are hemmed in. There is mountains on every side. Before them is the Red Sea. Behind them is who? Pharaoh. Yeah determined to annihilate them, to destroy them completely. And then God performs a miracle and, and, and they walk on the dry bed of the Red Sea and come across the other side. And it is a miracle because Pharaoh tried to do the same thing and he did what? He perished. Okay? They get to the other side and they, uh, chapter 15, they sing a song of praise and worship to God. Why were they complaining? 
somebody can food. They're hungry. Numbers 16. What did they say? I wanted to go back to Egypt. I'd like for you to join in with me this morning. What did they say? Watch this. Verse 3. And the children of Israel said, to gather themselves against Moses and against Aaron. Would to God, verse 3. 16, verse 3. Number 16. They are simple. Number Elder, I can't know. I don't know which one is telling. Sorry, did I say numbers? Exodus 16. Oh, I'm, looking at I'm, I'm, I'm reading here Exodus 16 and I'm wondering why no one is connecting with me. Sorry. <laughs> Exodus 16 days. We are coming to numbers. We are coming to numbers. Numbers is numbers 11. Yeah? 16, which number? Like? Exodus 16, verse 3. The Israelites said to them, only we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. They were, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So, 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 God has taken you out of bondage, out of slavery. And he has demonstrated by his mighty hand for your cause, okay? And, and, and suddenly there is this wilderness, if, if, if you've been to um, um, Egypt, it's, it's dry, it's barren, it's just foreboding, and, and this is where they are. But God has not got them there by plane or by car, it's by miracle after miracle after miracle, yeah? And then he, he, he leaves them in this situation where they are what? They are hungry. Why would God do that? To see if they're alive. Okay. But the response is, would to God we have died by the hand of God for the land of Egypt. When we sat by what? <coughs> the flesh pots of Egypt. And when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And so God responds and says, I will make a miracle and I will give you food. And what food did he give them? <laughs> and they ate this food for 40 years. The children of Israel, uh, I'm reading again from Patriots and Prophets, uh, chapter 25, uh, 297, Point one, those of you who have it. The children of Israel did eat manna for how many years? 40, 40 years. years. Until they came to the land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came to the borders of Cana. For 40 years, they were daily reminded by the miraculous provision of God's unfailing care and tender love. The psalmist um, Psalm 78, 24, and, say, uh, and 25 says, God gave them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. That is food provided for them by the angels, sustained by the corn of heaven. They were daily taught that having God's promise, they were as secure from want as if surrounded by the fields of grain on the fertile plains. Manna fell from heaven, day in, day out, providing food for them. If you were among the Israelites, how would you have felt? How would you have responded? How would you have um, lived? Let's 
go to Numbers 11. We begin reading verse 4 to 6. <coughs> now the mixed multitude who were among them, you see they've had manna for years and years and years, and this is, and this is the response. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. King James Version says they fell a lasting. <coughs> For what? So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish that we ate free. <coughs> the cucumbers, the melons, the onions, the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up because of this manna before our eyes day in Kenya. We are tired of manna. We read just a few moments ago from Psalm 78 that God did what? God gave them manna which was like what? Angel food. He takes them out of Egypt, he brings them into the desert, and what food can you get out of the desert? It's a miracle that is happening day in, day out. Okay? But here, we see that it starts with the mixed multitude, okay? And they do what? They last after and the cucumbers, and the melons, and the garlic, and the onion. Is it making sense to you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay? God has taken me out of bondage, you know, where I had no choice, and he has brought me to this place where every morning I don't have to do anything, I just go out and gather that which I need, it's right there, okay? And now I say, mm, the fish in Egypt. What's going on, Making yeah. use of idle hands. <laughs> you see, there, there's something, there's something that is, is critical here. You see, there's something that is crucial here. God could have taken them out of Egypt and dumped them in Canaan, in the promised land. But no, he takes them. You know, demonstrating his power, you know, uh, step by step, bringing them into the wilderness, yeah? And, and, and then get to this situation where they, they cry out and they say, you brought us out of Egypt. They are crying out, they, they, they are complaining, okay? But he takes that and he says, okay, here, uh, I'll drop manna from heaven. And every morning they see the miracle. Every week it's a miracle, you know, before them. And then you have this situation, Numbers 11, where they all cry amongst themselves. And he says they, they fell a lasting. They yielded to intense craving. You see, when God takes them out of Egypt, I, 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 um, you have heard the saying that you can take an African out of Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, these are Egyptians. Are you with me? Okay. That God has taken out of Egypt. They've been in Egypt for how many years? 400. And so God is taking them out of Egypt and winning them, trying to win them of the Egyptian food. So that now they can no longer have the diseases of the Egyptians. And he takes 
the Egyptian food away from them and he gives them angel food day in, day out, miraculously. You see, God is trying to connect them to heaven. God is trying to connect with them by, um, you know, you, 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 you are what you eat. Okay, so every day God is trying to, it, it, um, it is said that if you change your diet, yeah, within three months you will have managed to um, repair, change the tissues within you because you have changed your diet. Okay, um, within 21 days you will have. Um, adopted your test buds within three months, uh, everything about you will have changed. But this was over such a long period of time. Every day God is giving them food. But the text is telling that they yielded to intense prayer. What God is, 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 is doing is trying to remove what? Egypt out of morning in our Sabbath school lesson that all of these things happened for what? Now, the mixed multitude were among them. It started with the mixed multitude among them. Who were the mixed multitude? Some of them <coughs> Egyptians. Those who are... You, you see, God performed a miracle as they were coming out of Egypt. So not everyone who came out was of the stock of Jacob, were part of the children of Jacob. The Egyptians followed with them. So this is where it started. They yielded to the intense craving and lusted after the food of Egypt. We, 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 we read in the book of Daniel, that Daniel, when uh, in Babylon, did not, um, I think it's Daniel uh, chapter 1 verse 8, um, decided to not partake of the king's food. Okay? And it uses a special word there. It says, defile himself with the king's food. With the king's diet. Because by so doing, he would become part of what was going on in Babylon. But uh, he just wanted a simple diet. It started with the mixed multitudes here. And it says, so the children of Israel wept again. Who will give us? John six forty eight to fifty one. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus takes the children of Israel out of Egypt, and he gives them manna, which was truly representative of who? His body. Himself. <laughs> so that they may partake of himself, and be transformed in character and be like who? Like him. Yeah. <clears throat> but instead, they crave after the food of Egypt. And in 
John, Jesus himself, is telling us that I am the bread of life. I gave manna to your fathers in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that I sent from heaven. And I am that bread that has come from heaven. And if any man eats this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus extends the very promise that he gave to the children of Israel, the very manner that he gave to the children of Israel to you and I today. In his word, in his very life. That if we accept him and take him um, as he is, that our lives will be fully transformed in his likeness. And my prayer this morning is that each one of us will take the example of the children of Israel um, and stop craving after the watermelons, after the garlic, after the onion um, of Egypt, after the fish of Egypt, and instead um, take the food, the manna that Jesus gives. Now someone help me uh, as we close. What is the garlic? What is the watermelon? What is the um, cucumber? What is it? I was about to ask that. It's the food, yes? The craving. Okay. Lifestyle. You see, um, it might name the watermelons, the cucumbers, the, 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 the onions. It is not saying that those foods are bad. No. Okay, but they are representative of, of, of the lifestyle of Egypt. Okay. So when they, you know, when it says they lasted after, they were craving for the very life that they lived in in, 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 in <coughs> Egypt, which God was trying to take them away from by uh, replacing it with 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 the angel food. But they so desired the the, 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 the life of Egypt that giving them manna did not help at all. And you see, he says, I will not bring upon you the diseases of the Egyptians. The, the reason the, the, the Egyptians had the diseases that they had was because of what? Yes. The lifestyle they, they lived. So when it's talking about the diet here, it's really talking about the, the choices that they made, the lifestyles they made, the, 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 the things that made them um, who they were in Egypt. So really, it is talking about the choices that we make. You see, when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, take me. You know, he is really saying, how much time are you spending in the presence of God? Every morning you wake up, what is the first thing you do? Is it is it to come before God and see Him for, for who He is and be transformed into His likeness? Or the first thing you worry about, or, or the first thing you do is worry about your day, worry about your assignment, worry about um, whatever it is that is causing you worry? That is the diet of Egypt. And every morning when they woke up, they had manna, um, outside which came in the dew of heaven um, and God was trying to draw them to himself to say that I will sustain your lives in the same way that I have provided this miracle day in and day out. So my prayer this morning is that each one of us will um, see the miracle that God is making or performing in our lives and just yield ourselves to him and allow him to take full charge of our hands. <coughs> <coughs>
to perform this ceremony that night. Um, yes, the Passover. What happened at the Passover? They, 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 they had a lamb mm -hmm. that they had uh, kept um, for, for two weeks so that they, they became attached to, to the little lamb. And then on that night, they were required. They were required to kill the animal, the little animal that they had become so attached to. They kept it, looked after it, fed it. You know, it became, you know, like family member. Yes, like a family member, like a pet. And then they had to kill it. And then they took the blood, they were required to take the blood and do what with it? Sprinkle it on the doorposts of the houses. So that that night when the destroying angel would come, he would see the blood and pass over and not destroy them. And the houses where they didn't have the blood on the doorposts, that night every firstborn in Egypt was killed. And so when they left Egypt, they had to celebrate the Passover uh, every year as a reminder of how God has passed over and delivered them um, uh, because he saw the blood. And that lamb represented Christ. Just like we spoke about earlier, the, 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 the bread, the, 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 the manna represents the bread. Um, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. And of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my soul. us from the 
mic. Of Egypt. To the life of the promised land. To the life of the promised kingdom. You have given of yourself, Lord, that as we behold you day in, day out, each one of us will be transformed after your likeness. And so as we partake in this service this day, we just, we just lift up the bread before you and mm. pray, Lord, for your blessing upon it. Mm -hmm. That, Lord, sanctifies our lives may be sanctified. Mm -hmm. We pray for the um, wine, which is representative of the blood that you shed. Mm -hmm. That, Lord, you may wash our yeah. sins and make us clean, transformed after the, the likeness. The glory <coughs> perfect submission
After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do we as often as ye drink it in remembrance of them. Thank you. 